Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Schwab Coaching. It is time for Trader Talk in today's market. I'm your host, Kevin Horner. It's a beautiful morning here in Denver, Colorado. As usual on this fine day, I'm joined by our man, Mr. Lee Bull, out there in California. Hey, Lee, happy hump day to you, sir. How are things? I play good. <laughs> Just halfway, but that's all right. Hey, we're going to work through the uh, the Wednesday doldrums, so to speak, heading towards the weekend and a uh, holiday weekend at that, of course. Uh, I'm going to remind you all that we've got our opportunity to engage with you in the chat this morning. Take a moment to do just that. We are joined in the chat today by Mr. John McNichol. Thanks for being here, John. Uh, Lee and I are going to get down to business discussing a little bit of the news in the market, some significant charts we're seeing. And of course, we want to hear from you. So please feel free to post there in the chat. We'll be uh, keeping an eye on it and try to get to a number of your specific questions there as well. Uh, of course, we want to discuss uh, disclosure. So let's just remind you of the importance of these key details. Our conversation is exclusively educational and informational. Remember, we do not make recommendations. So expressions of opinion are always subject to change without notice. Further, just bear in mind, uh, when we discuss individual transactions and trades, we do so from an example basis. We manage an example portfolio. We talk about example trades. We encourage you to consider process more than anything. But just remember, every security we bring to your attention here today, these are not to be considered recommendations uh, in any way. Now, in uh, Trader Talk, this is essentially what we get down to business doing, everybody. We check out the major trends of the market here. We look for uh, trends available to us in individual sectors and industries within the market as well. Uh, we hit up some stocks in the news, re review our example portfolio, see how things are looking there, see if we need to make some adjustments. So that's what we're going to get to this morning. But before we do the jumping off, I did want to remind everybody, yesterday we held the 2024 market uh, out look a conversation with the Schwab Center for Financial Research Specialists. And I wanted to bring you make up, make sure you're all aware that it's available for your viewing already on the YouTube channel as well as in our calendar. So if I bring up the calendar here, I was just going to highlight quickly how we could get you to it. Notice when you come to the page, initially you're on the current day. If you just hit this arrow and go back one day and you'll scroll on down to the yesterday's event so that we get to the Tuesday. Here it is, and you'll notice on demand right from this link, everybody, hit the YouTube link, and boom, you are right there ready to watch. So an excellent conversation had uh, yesterday by uh, Liz Ann Saunders, Jeffrey Kleintop, Kathy Jones, hosted by our man Joe Mazzola. Make sure to check this out. Great level setting and table setting for you heading in to next year. Okay, with that completed, Lee Boy, goodness, we just cannot get a breather in the SPX. Maybe we get it today, sir, but ultimately we continue to monitor that 20-day moving average. And for a lot of traders, Lee, maybe even the 10-day moving average. Yeah, it's quite strong. On uh, market and sector analysis later today, we'll go over where we are seasonally. We're at a very interesting place as far as the uh, month of December goes. So we'll talk more about that, how to set up a chart to do that. But right now, a lot of the secondary indicators that many traders look at are also um, positive. The advance to decline line is going in the right direction. So uh, don't step in front of a freight train, some technical traders might say. Mm -hmm. Kind of feels like that, but let's let's take that one extra step, Lee. At what point do we traders maybe have to start considering increasing our defensive nature as we approach this? Because right now, as you stated, and we can clearly see from the price action, it feels like there's just uh, a freedom, if you will, to buy what you want and take advantage of dips, step into the market. But that can be misleading as we approach highs like this, can't it? Yes, correct. I mean, some indicators that traders look at uh also you know sentiment sentiment is quite extended um you know some traders look at the aaii there's other ones you can look at cnn fear greed they're all extended so that's a warning sign but just like oscillators sentiment can stay overbought if you will for longer than you think um mm -hmm. so yeah, there's uh, 
we had a question also we thought we would uh, talk to now. It was about the window dressing effect. You know, what is that? What am I to do? And window dressing typically refers to the fact that if there's a major market move in one direction or another at the end of the quarter or the end of the year, mm -hmm. uh, institutions like to show that they were involved even sometimes when they weren't. So they might buy, since we've been in just an uptrend the last quarter, uh, they might not want to show their clients on their you know, end of quarter, which is also the end of the year statements that they were underinvested. So they might mm -hmm. actually buy towards the end of the quarter. And we'll see, you know, the seasonal chart will show that a little bit. Um, so I think that might be going on. There's also mm -hmm. the FOMO that... Uh, you see people talk about all the time as well. So the good news is that these uh, moves can continue. The bad news is historically, often uh, when you get these kind of squeeze higher, um, at some point they reverse quite fast also. But mm -hmm. uh, you just look for some sign of that reversal potentially happening, you know, a break of some support level. Um, huge divergence in some momentum indicators or something like that. Sure. Ultimately, I, I think what you're saying is as much as anything else, there's never, there will not be a more appropriate time to be disciplined in our process, right? Make sure we are aware of our exit strategies, have those at least noted. If you're not going to incorporate exit strategies with automated orders, as an example, you might make sure you've got designations on your charts or notes that we will refer back to, to make sure you're taking action on weakness. One of the things we don't want to do, obviously, is allow good trades that have probably been working since November 1, as an example. Um, we don't want to allow those good trades to become bad trades. And the best way to do that is to make sure you're constantly Constantly considering your comfort as it relates to the amount of money you have invested. So if at any point you're feeling a little overdone, maybe you're looking at profits and saying, man, I really don't want to give up these profits. Consider just starting to reduce position size and that'll work towards making you a little bit more comfortable with where you sit. Um, that's, that's one way that traders can go about this. Just constantly considering the cash I have available, is it enough to be comfortable if we underwent a, a bit of a market drawdown? Remember, what goes up eventually comes down. We don't know when that's going to occur, but we're going to try and manage our trades along the way and build cash so that we can take advantage when that does, in fact, occur. So um, as it relates to the SPX, not a lot to say uh, to this moment. Let's look at how uh, the NDX is looking. Um, also really strong here, Lee also peeling away from that orange 20-day moving average, speedily moving even higher. It's been uh, quite the captivating move here in the NASDAQ 100. Right. Um, some people say, just look at the chart, look from the lower left, <laughs> lower left to the upper right, yeah. which way is it going, you know? <laughs> Sometimes it's no, the way. it's no more difficult than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and I have done this a number of years, Lee, and we have often said sometimes when you get into these instances where you just there is no give back, it can be kind of boring because for days on end, we're saying the same thing. Uh, more strength. Consider raising stops. Look for your opportunity to take a little bit of profit. But ultimately, highs aren't are not considered bearish in these instances so here we reside at uh i believe lee all-time levels on the ndx if i'm not mistaken there's my weekly yep there we are we are through it officially today yeah and i'll put up the the uh like the three or four year weekly on the spx we're almost sure we're just the shade under the all-time high on that too yeah we're pretty darn close there 48 yeah. 18 is our intro right. So we're about we're less than fewer than 60 points away, Lee, from right. matching those highs. Right. It's crazy, right? I don't yeah, think let's uh, look at the asked at the yeah. beginning of January. I don't think we would have said <laughs> this is where we would be. All right. All right. Let's talk about our Russell Lee. Uh, I'm going to leave that weekly chart up because it sure gives a very clean picture of the range we've traded in, doesn't it? Right. And today. Boy, we are close. Oh, we are close. Yeah, we yeah. are popping into that through that level. We are maybe we are looking at a potential breakout here, Lee. Yeah, let's keep our eye on this one for the rest of the day. Yeah. 
I mean, this is significant. Uh, the level above everybody that I've got that line drawn in just around 2345 is an approximation of what a trader might consider. We have been range bound here, everybody, 1640-ish up to 20, uh, to up to 2000 points, excuse me. So 350 up to 360 points total in the range. And we have been in that range since May of 22. So what you're looking at is an longer than an 18 month sideways consolidation. If we bust out of it and start trading with closes, significant closes over this 2020 area, uh, that would be a significant short term development uh, for the uh, Russell. I think that's exactly why Lee was pointing that out here. Plenty to watch. Um, and of course, we've gotten some lift with the, the yields dropping a little bit, Lee. Uh, so we have noticed noticed that the uh, the 10 year, for example, continues to languish. I drew it in as a bear flag, expecting it to actually rally into the 200, maybe even into the 20 day. Lee, it's just actually continued to move lower. Right. And uh, I think it's it's lower today, right? Yeah, it is. Or it's yeah. certainly opened lower. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the reasons for that was we had some CPI data out of the Eurozone, especially the UK, and it annualized at only 1%. So that's causing uh, drops in yield over there as well. Okay, well, it is a um, a global market. So yeah, impacts across the board, Lee. Um, what other areas have been of note to you here? I know we're going to get to some stocks in the news. Uh, we definitely have some big significant ones making some having an impact on things kind of broadly. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to make sure we hit up here this morning on our broad market review? Uh, no, I think we hit, hit the majors. Let's do talk about some of those stocks in the news because sure. it will inform us about uh, potential moves in some indices like the transports. We're going to talk about that right away. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, so let's look at the, the big news of the morning was FedEx as of last night. Yeah, had a pretty healthy move lower here this morning, everybody. We are off about 29, uh, 29 points, about 10%. Right, so the news was they missed estimates on the top and bottom lines. Uh, you know, they... They missed. They did 22.17 billion in revenues versus estimates of 22.41. They missed on earnings, but uh, for some analysts, the uh, real problem was the guidance. They lowered their full year guidance actually to negative, at least for the next quarter or something like that. So yeah, uh, they said they for a single low digit decline versus prior guidance of flat. Okay. They are blaming, um, they said, geopolitical angst. Really? That's what they, that's what they said, yeah. You know. Okay. Now, well, I, have, I have to call out the last time they warned us, Lee, uh, because they made a significant move and bottomed pretty shortly thereafter. Right. I think some technical traders might be a little bit intrigued that we opened lower and now we seem to have rallied off the 200 day. Um, so yeah. some technical traders might use the 200 if they think this is overdone. Sure, I could see that. Certainly for a, a trader who maybe hasn't been participating but was waiting for an opportunity. Um, you know, sometimes Lee, those traders though they don't, they don't like to step in on the day it's making such a significant move. Uh, sometimes right. a trader will look for just a little settling action, if you will, a few days of maintaining the 200 day because there's a, a fair bit of energy that comes out of a move like this uh, on a 10% drawdown. It may take a few days to find this new range. You could easily trade between the 200 and the 50 day moving averages there. It's about a six point range or so, six to seven points. You could trade within that for a few days as it settles out. So, you know, just uh, ultimately you wanna make sure that the, if you wanna be a buyer, you wanna make sure that the selling has kind of run its course uh, and that might take just a few days. So maybe some patience in the offing there. So right. Speaking, uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Before we go on to the next stock in the news, we do have a question back on the Russell. Um, yeah. The question yeah, is: the same place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you wait for a few days of rub resistance to enter the trade, or just get in with a tight stop? I think technical traders 
would do either of those. Um, I think some technical traders, because maybe towards the end of the day, if it looks like we're going to close above there uh, instead of just an intraday move, maybe that's what some technical traders might look for if they wanted to get in right away. Again, the Horner rule um, mm -hmm. is a breakthrough re resistance or support or a break of a moving average. Uh, some traders like to see, you know, two or three days above there to certainly um, make it a little bit more confirmatory. Uh, so I think to read his question, traders might do it either way. If you took the view that you wanted to uh, buy a little with a tight stop, then you might, uh, some traders might do that, but not the whole position and because it many times these breakouts you know they'll come back and test or they fail after a day or two so you know once it holds for a few days even if you got in if a trader got in uh, earlier then uh, that trader might add more um for a bigger bigger commitment sure Ultimately, allowing the positive move in your favor to be validating in the first place gives you reason to add to the trade. Yeah, um, whether it's two days or three days or four days, I think what uh, what a lot of traders have learned is that consistency in whichever rule of thumb you're working with will benefit you in the long haul. So just have a number you like and stick with it. Like I said, Lee knows it's for me, it's always been the rule of three. Uh, and, and that gives a little bit more confidence to the opportunity uh, for a lot of us as traders. So, um, yeah, we're at an interesting spot, though. One other thing to note, Lee, some traders might look at the fact that we had this bull flag here very quick. That was a very speedy bull flag that just got resolved with yesterday's move. What's the net looks by itself to be a little bit different than each of the prior three instances we got into this level, doesn't it? I mean, uh, here it was very quick, but it, it didn't last. You know, the last time prior to that, we were using it as resistance and it clearly broke down quick. Well, the fact is this time we're not just, you know, quickly pulling back. We actually got a true breakout of a bull flag at resistance. So, some traders might take that to be a little bit of a heads up. It's unclear. Obviously, we don't know. We can't uh, tell the future here, but there are some uh, maybe some indications of strength uh, that you might not have expected. Indeed. All right. Let's go back. And uh, due to the report by FedEx, let's look yes. at UPS, see what it's doing in sympathy. Mm, yeah. So it too had a rough open, but it also bought up off of that low initially here, at least. Actually, had a pretty good rally right off the start. Yeah, uh, some traders might consider that kind of a very weird, very shallow inverse head and shoulders with a compound double bottom as the head. Mm -hmm. uh, if you took that view, unfortunately, Today's action took you back down, uh, took the stock back down under the neckline. Which However, think you would put right about there. Right. However, some technical yeah. traders uh, might be watching that 20 day moving average, as you can as can be seen on this chart. It has not been a bad guide. Mm -hmm. for yeah, this. for about a month almost. Yeah. Yeah, so that could certainly uh, work or maintain here. And if it does and you start to see bounces off the 20 day or at least a hold of the 20 day over subsequent trading sessions here, that might give traders reason to maybe start positioning in UPS if they want to be long the space. We should also um, note, Lee, how this is impacting the whole transportation. Uh, space because the this has been a winner for us uh notice we have just continued higher interesting ledge we stopped at today huh very interesting so we've got a gap ledge of support right here uh many traders want to see that maintained 
and would perhaps suggest, Lee, if we start filling down into the gap space, that we might actually revisit the 20 day. But the alternative to that is holding the gap ledge, <clears throat> excuse me, and allowing the 20 day to get caught up to this gap level would also be uh, a nice positive. That's only going to occur, though, uh, with a continuation of the shorter term rally and pushes through the prior highs. So uh, we're going to need to monitor what's going on in the transportations. Uh, Patricia, I can help you out with the watch list here on the market, as I call it. Um, happy to do so. So I'll share this with you all. Just remember for me uh, that when we offer these uh, details for you, these are not uh, guaranteed in, uh, in terms of any of the, uh, the script detail here. So you might have to make some adjustments. I'll share this with you. And then I'm going to go ahead and po paste that into the, into the question queue for everybody. There you go, everybody. Remember, that, that uh, specific script will work exclusively here in the Schwab side of Think or Swim. Um, there you go. All right, next up, Lee. Uh, we well, hit up FedEx. We looked at UPS. Yeah, What's I next? just want to make uh, one other observation that some Please. traders are looking at. So put up the, the Dow Jones Industrials. Okay. All right, that's at an all-time high. Now you put up the transports. You know, some traders who follow Dow theory might get actually even more bullish if the transports can take out that high. That would be a, a confirmatory signal for Dow theorists. Yeah, in fact, let me put that back on. This is the weekly. So transports would need to clear the last peak around 1670. Uh, and the Dow Industrials, man, what uh, just a speedy move. My goodness. Two full months straight up, Lee. Um, and you can see we're already at new highs here. So we'd love the confirmation of that would be transports making new short term highs as well would be a lovely development for the broad market uh, in a longer window of time. Right. We've got a question from uh, Veronica. What do we make of the uh, lower volume? Mm. on some issues lately some of that's seasonal um yeah. i think i'll also say that you know having looked at this stuff for years sometimes though especially on indices you can have low volume melt-ups um oh, yeah it, it's not that uncommon well, the lack of volume really can skew returns on a short-term basis, can it? I mean, we can push the market uh, significant moves with less volume involved. Just because once you've got a bias to the market, you don't need volume necessarily. If especially if it's lighter, you can actually have more uh, significant moves either direction. All right, let's look at um, another one that could have done better in its report. In a different industry, let's look at General Mills, GIS. All right. Boy, that has been a pretty good drawdown here, Lee. About a 30% haircut. Right. Close. Now, what was the report? Uh, revenue was light of expectations. Uh, they reported 5.14 billion. They were looking for 5.35 billion. Uh, Organic net sales were down 2%, even taking into account stronger pricing. So I was just going to do what you were going to do there. So, you know, some traders might be saying, well, oh, it's still at least now it's a higher low. Mm -hmm. And you, many traders would tell you they like a bounce off the week open, uh, especially if it can recapture the moving averages it's been working with. In this case, maybe that 50-day um, if we just made it the 50 day, look at how there's a nice gentle curve to that 50 day lead already has flattened out, already started curving back up. So there's an improvement in this chart um, that uh, that is notable. The other thing that jumps off this screen to me, Lee, is that it looks like the last two, three months have been quite an accumulation period. Look at the volume down there. And the raw volume bars. Now, on balance volume isn't necessarily moving our, in our direction the way we would like, but volume has been significant as we've been rangy here, here for the last few months. 
Right. It would be nice to get the uh, unbalanced volume line to it make would. a new relative high at some point. Yeah, that would be kind of confirming confirmatory for us. We should also, Lee, since we're looking at uh, uh, GIS General Mills here, let's quickly peek in on the staples uh, collectively, which is an interesting chart because, boy, you know, this thing looked like we were going to bottom out officially, and, and actually we did. We got an excellent candle back here on October 6th, nice hammer. And since then, Lee, we have really consistently been using the 20-day moving average once we got through it, um, and we almost got thrown back to it with a little bit of weakness here. So this has been an improving space as well, and uh, perhaps reaching an area where traders may want to be giving that a little bit of a deeper look um, if you were looking for, I don't know, rotational thoughts, for example, uh, it, it is notable we've paused at the 200-day moving average, but if this were to continue the uptrend trajectory with the 20-day here, moves through that ledge at the 200-day would be pretty pretty interesting and uh, maybe significant for traders in the short term, Lee. Right. We got another question here from GR. Um, high on unbalanced volume indicates upward trend. Mm -hmm. you, you, generally, you uh, technical traders would like the unbalanced volume to be going in the same direction as the trend. Sometimes it can actually lead. Uh, it's interesting that uh, we have John McNichol here on the chat. If you look at his um, Trading with Technical Indicators uh, webcast on Monday, which is in the archives. He does an excellent job, not only talking about unbalanced volume, but an indicator uh, built on that that can sometimes give a little bit of a heads up. So I encourage you to watch that one. Uh, it was excellent. And But generally, you know, what sometimes you can see is on balance volume making a new relative high, though the stock isn't. Uh, many traders mm -hmm. consider that you know, a positive situation. Um, for confirmation, you'd like it going the same way. Yep. More of the same there, Lee. We love confirmation. Let's. Speaking of confirmation, let me reiterate the rule of three for Linda here. Uh, the rule of three, everybody, just the idea. It's just a rule of thumb that some traders will incorporate to confirm breakouts or confirm breakdowns. We were utilizing as our example today the Russell Index, uh, the Russell 2000, where we're at resistance. Traders needing some rule of thumb to verify or validate a breakout. So the rule of three Maybe three consecutive closes over resistance suggests that the breakout is legitimate. Another fallback that a more aggressive trader might consider would be perhaps a 3% violation of a given level of resistance. So $100 stock showing resistance at 100, that is. If it starts trading at 103 on an intraday basis, some traders might say, that's enough for me. That's an aggressive entry, of course, because what happens intraday doesn't mean it has to maintain at the close. And a lot of traders prefer closing values to that extent. Hence, the idea of two to three, maybe even a fourth consecutive close over resistance for validation. But ultimately, that's what we're talking about there, Linda. Okay, Lee, next uh, up on your hit parade, sir. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that we actually had a question about this from uh, Margino about uh, crypto stocks. There is one in the yeah. news today. It's um, Marathon Digital, M-A-R-A. -A. Oh, so following the trend in crypto, which is – it's been a bit risk on. The market seems when the market's risk on, Lee, it seems crypto benefits. Right. Now, I think what some technical traders might be looking for here is if we start closing, you know, way down into yesterday's candle, we probably have a long tail, which some traders might think is a shooting star candlestick. And if we go down more than halfway, uh, into that previous candle, you know, that's dark cloud cover too. But we're not, we haven't done it yet. So mm -hmm. um, some traders uh, as a technique, uh, when things really run, uh, use a stop under the previous day's low. That's, that's well, an idea that some technical traders use to kind of lock in risk. 
That makes sense given the distance to the 10 day lead. We're five points at the low of today, five points from the 10 day moving average. That is a big, big discrepancy. That is huge at a $23 stock. So yes. how many traders are going to want to give up that five points? Not many. And, and in, we were just talking on balance volume, Lee. I think this is a fantastic reflection of what on balance volume can validate for your trend, right? And ultimately what it's saying is stock's been climbing and it's been climbing aggressively. So the sell volume is dramatically less than the buy volume. So I know it stands to reason though, right? On about, you would think stock making new push to highs, it's up 100% in um, you know, a mere six weeks. Uh, what a shock, the on balance volume is confirming it, Lee. <laughs> right, I mean, you might've said, you know, last week the stock is up 75%, you know, it can't go any higher. Well, <laughs> well yes it can, sure it, can. <laughs> it is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's look at this. is kind of interesting of uh, a Dow stock. Let's look at Boeing. Yes, Boeing had been improving, and wow, I just um, apparently Lee, I have not been as keen on watching Boeing. I should have been. Even the ten day on this continues to maintain. My goodness. Right That's now, here much. we have. Yeah, here we have that on balance volume confirmation, which some technical creators think, um, you know, validates the trend. The news on them was also pretty nice. They announced that uh, Lufthansa ordered over 100 737 Maxes. It's the first order from them in over 30 years. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, Lee, if you bought this with the break of the 10 day back in mid October, you've not been given a re reason to sell any yet. Not a single close below the 10-day uh, dating back to middle of October. That is an impressive trend. So once more, everybody, this is a situation where many traders who bought this in the middle of October are raising stops. Some might have already started to incorporate a trailing stop at this point because for a lot of traders, Lee, if you were long in the middle of that uh, back here, you might be staring at 50, 60, 70 points of profit. And some traders are comfy raising those stops themselves manually, but you can can consider uh, the um, this trailing stop, something that you've seen us do the last couple of shows here, uh, everybody, with our example portfolio. We made an adjustment with a trailing stop yesterday. We did one on Monday as well. Um, if you haven't seen those, maybe check the archives. That's a good way to uh, get reminded of uh, the process involved there. And then one other Dow stock. Let's look at Salesforce. Okay. Breaking and maintaining that 10 yeah, day once is, again, Lee. Yeah, and this is in spite of a downgrade from Wells Fargo to uh, equal weight from overweight. Uh, the reason they gave was they are doing review of what will benefit from the steady shift towards growth in 2024, can they have that growth that people think, I suppose. But um, there's the, for technical traders, the chart seems to be fairly bullish. Tough to argue with a 20 day moving average aggressively sloping upward, um, on balance volume making highs with highs in price. Now you are getting a little divergence with the RSI, but you're still in overbought conditions. Maybe the implication that some traders take from that is a retreat to the to the support, maybe the 20 day moving average, but certainly there, that does not imply a breakdown. Uh, overbought conditions are, are positives, not negatives. Um, okay, Lee, our example portfolio has been um, doing pretty well. Uh, we are in- yeah, let's profit. take a look at those. Yeah. Yeah, pretty handsome. I'm only on twice a week, problem. so let's see what we're doing here. Well, I'd say that the only thing that stands out, well, first of all, if we've sorted by profit scenarios, you could see everything's in the in the green. That's a positive. Collectively, we're up 4%. Uh, but what I was noting is that while we've built a portfolio that on an individual trade-to-trade -trade basis does not exceed our tolerance for risk, we probably should reduce some position size because I'm noting the size of that Caterpillar trade, it's working in our favor, but that is way too big a position for a $100,000 portfolio. That puts us at 30% allocation for that stock, probably too big. What are your thoughts? Right. Um, yeah, 30,000. 
Yeah, it's, it's just, bit. and I think I would just generally speaking, Lee. A lot of traders try to keep their trade portfolio in something like a 10% allocation maximum, just a ballpark and a thumbnail, right? Maybe maybe you're a trader who only wants to manage five stocks, and instead you're jumping that up to 15 or 20% maximum. But ultimately, have a number. But I just feel like looking at the way the portfolio is, that's probably a little bit aggressive, and we'd be benefiting uh, from selling a little bit of that. Maybe today's the day we take some profits since it's been a great move for us. Yeah, I mean, we could uh, maybe get uh, rid of half of it. Yeah, we could do that. That would at least put us in line with the Union Pacific the other position yeah. and Visa. And then we'd have some more cash to work with so that we could consider alternate example trades. So let's take a look at it on the chart, everybody. Uh, we, of course, have a stop order in here already. So let's zoom in. So we've got a limit sell up above and a stop order for downside protection here. So Lee, if we decided to take 50 shares off and take a little bit of profit here, um, we could um, actually maintain our stop and be okay with it. We might wanna take off our limit sell though and just see if we could allow ourselves the opportunity for the stock to continue to run and not look at it as a target sell scenario. Right, so we should cancel the limit, and we should um, to do what we said. We would sell 50 at the market and then change the stop amount to 50 shares. All right, so let's do this change this one first. So we'll just do a cancel replace. Do you want to raise the stop ledge, Lee, or do you want to stick with it where it's at? We're at, we're at uh, 275 or so. It's about 20 points of risk, but remember, 20 points of risk, we're going to cut the position size in half. So we, we're we not going to be risking as much of our profit, of course, because we're taking some off. Right. Let us, uh, I think some technical traders might consider raising the stop to just under those highs back in, I can't see, in like September. Right here. Yeah, just a little bit under there. Uh, yeah, that's really and, tight. So maybe like to the low from yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I think some technical traders might consider that. Okay, so yesterday's low was 286.16. What if we came below that by a little bit, um, you know, to say under 285? So 285, less some change. Um, and that'll give us the chance to try and lock in more of our profit situation. So let's do that. Um, here we go. 286, and then I'm just gonna use my arrows. We'll dr just drop this a little bit. There we go, everybody. So that'll give us a little extra wiggle room. We're doing that on 50 shares, confirming and sending. And then that means I can now immediately sell, as we have seen here, sell into strength. I love that idea. Uh, let's go ahead and sell into some strength. We'll take 50 shares off the table. So my default is to 25. I'm just going to increase that to 50, make it a market order, confirm, and send. Okay, so now we've yeah. got a nice chunk of change. We and do. I certainly feel a little bit better about that, Lee. Um, okay, and, and Chris, just a heads up, uh, in these classes, this particular segment, Trader Talk, we try to adhere as best we can to, to equities. We do have a lot of discussions on the channel here regarding options and the employment of options in your strategies. Uh, but here we, we do try to keep it to the equity side as exclusively as we can. So just a heads up there. Um, okay. Lee, next up in the uh, overall portfolio, uh, this week we raised our Bank of America stop order. Bank of America has been cruising higher. We're up 10% on that one. Uh, quick peek in on its movement of late shows that we may have picked a good stop level on this example trade, Lee. Looks like it's trying to break out of a little bull flag here, doesn't it? It does. So, um I think some technical traders might feel that there's no need to change that stop right now. But mm -hmm. uh, it does look like if you do a little downtrend line on that flag, we could be taking it out perhaps. Now also that yesterday was the um, the low of the pullback, mm -hmm. right? After the big spike up. So if we can close 
higher than yesterday's high. Uh, as you know, um, some traders like that, what we call a, a hold entry, a close above the high of the low day. So um, if you did that, then perhaps you might even buy a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got some great follow-up questions to our Caterpillar discussion, and I, I think we could utilize them here as well. Um, you know, we are looking at a trailing stop on this. So first of all, I want to point out that our, our trailing stop is set right now to this ledge that you can see at 3274. But if we do, in fact, trade through yesterday's highs, uh, then we're likely going to start seeing that stop raise itself. Remember, this is a when it trails like this, as your price action makes new highs, yeah, this moves up with it. But as it retreats from the new highs, it does not thereafter fall. So uh, the question that I wanted to address was about whether why we didn't wouldn't just use a trailing stop to continue uh, maybe staying long in the position on Caterpillar, uh, whereas we just raised the stop with a traditional manual stop, meaning uh, that we are raising the stops in lieu of allowing the system to do that. Uh, well, in this case, I would just point out maybe the 1% idea uh, of an of using a 1% trail, for example, might not be enough. And the reason I say that is that there's a six dollar range here, Lee, uh, and that means that that's almost that's right around two percent of the price per share in Caterpillar. So what we have there, Lee, if we use a trailing stop that's less than the ATR, we have a greater risk of being stopped out in a very quick basis, don't we? Right. We also have a question um, about what happens if uh, stocks gap down. Uh, you know, they can gap through your stop level. Yes, if uh, you've been trading for any length of time, uh, you are going to get gapped. There's no question about it. However, think about it this way. Uh, I've been trading for since 1973. You know, you get gaps for you and you get gaps against you. I mean, that's just trading. True. Yeah, so, it's, an occupational it's just the way habit, it is. Right? All right, so what happens if you have a gap down on a stop? Then you're going to get uh, the next available trade. You know, you've broken your stop level. Now it's a market order. You're going to get the next available trade. One thing that some technical traders do when they get gapped is the following. There's often, if you look at enough intraday charts, there is often on a big gap down, there tends to be a recovery period often not always, you know, from about um, 20 of 10 Eastern to maybe, you know, 10 to 10 minutes before 10 Eastern to 10 Eastern. Some traders, uh, you know, if, they're, if they didn't have a stop and they're not taken out, they were doing kind of a mental stop, then they might wait after the open on a gap and see if it can recover. But if you do that, what, many traders do is put a stop under the the low of that gap now the what you're trying to accomplish those traders is that you're going to get out because you're still under the level you said you'd get out but maybe just get a little bit better price mm -hmm. truly uh to say that um managing one's emotional tie to their positions and these opportunities for moves to go against us, as Ramesh is pointing out, and, and many else are also noting, I've I've had those gaps work against me. I've never had one go in my favor yet. Uh, sooner or later, you will. But again, we recognize, look, you know, it's an occupational scenario. Like I said, uh, trading is part, uh, a part of trading is taking losses. Uh, you, incorporating automated orders is a benefit to allowing us to do that. It helps to eliminate or at least reduce emotions. But, um, you know, again, there's no perfect order. There's no perfect trade. Really, that's what we want to discuss. Uh, recognize there is risk associated with your stops, risk associated with the traditional stop, a stop, uh, stop that incorporates a limit price thereafter, a trailing stop. They all have some semblance of risk like i say there's just no perfect way to do it all right and then the final question and then we have to stop our time Please. is up is do gaps always get filled not necessarily the ones that don't are called breakaway gaps if you put, put up a 20-year chart of meta 
Yeah, we can do that. I'm going to go to a weekly on that. No, don't do a weekly. Do no, a daily. I have to go back to the daily because there's a – I can get to a long run time frame. You said 20? Yeah. Oh. All right. There you go. Right. So, that, you know, there's gaps that didn't get filled. Right. I mean, look right there in April of 2020. There was a big gap higher. You know, zoom in on that and you'll see it. That's so there, crazy. there's so one. The, yep. Yeah. And it didn't and fill it, and it's never been filled. Yeah. And there's another one. Not come back to that, that gap, right? All right. So mm -hmm. not all, not always. Often, but not yeah. always. Yeah, I guess the question becomes, you know, if you find yourself resting at a ledge of a gap, can it get filled? Yeah, of course it can. You know, they can break down and you could be working towards filling that gap at some point. But, um, yeah, I mean, here's a, a huge one that we have been in the midst of correcting for a very long time. Uh, and eventually it did. It did happen. Right. So last big significant gap is all the way back here from April of this year, Lee. Uh, yeah. And we have that was a runaway as well. Yep. So um, unfortunately, there's not a place to see the portfolio, everybody, other than to just make sure you're you're joining us here Monday through Wednesday when we review the equity portfolio. That's the best way to do it. So uh, I'll just remind you of that. Thanks for being here. And uh, don't forget to make sure we're on your calendar every day, every uh, every day of the week. Right, Lee? That's right. And uh, I guess we have to close. Yes, we do. So let's just remind everybody, um, you know, about what we did today. We went ahead and we hit up the major indices. We saw the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000. We also took a little bit of a deeper dive into the Dow Industrials and the relationship with the Dow Transports, uh, which was an interesting discussion on the heels of uh, FedEx is um, uh, earnings announcement today, which certainly hindered FedEx, hindered UPS, uh, and maybe hindering the market a little bit as we note the transports are down about three quarters of a percent. So uh, we'll wrap it there, everybody. Don't forget to check out the 2024 market outlook that is going to be available in the uh, YouTube channel here today for you as well. You can also get to it from our coaching page, just page back to yesterday and locate the on-demand link. So thanks to John McNichol in the chat. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Please do follow us on X as you can see those details below, but make sure you are uh, joining us for our next segment top of the hour that'll be at 11 a.m eastern thanks for being here everybody have a great rest of your week